Welcome to part 2 of my road trip series through Sweden, Finland and Norway. In the last episode I left Småland and started driving further north. After many hours I finally arrived at Vettern, Sweden's second biggest lake. The spot you just saw looks really cool but too many other cars not abandoned enough for my personal test and so on. But this lake is gigantic so let's just look for another spot. I drove around for quite a while but I just couldn't find a good spot at this lake. So I went to a smaller lake which is a little further north that I remembered from my former travels. There I finally got some sleep. But on the next morning I woke up to the smell of smoke and I should soon find out why. Somebody made a fire here and everything is so dry that it's glowing on and on and on. And it's basically eating itself through the dry ground. It's still smoking. The fire is still alive. Let's just put it out. Now you also get to see this very beautiful lake. Wow. Okay. So I'm gonna make a wet ring around the whole thing but first of all I want to especially pour water on these places that are still smoking that's the danger of making a fire at these dry conditions maybe it was just good that I couldn't find another spot before I came here I hear that there's lots of heat An hour later, the stuff continues to burn. I have now made several attempts to put out the fire, always filled up the bottle and watered the ground and I hope that now it's finally done. But there can always be some hidden spots of heat in that very, very, very dry soil. And yeah, it's really a beautiful day here at a beautiful Swedish lake and Evening is coming closer, but it's still gonna be a long, long time until the sun sets. It's around 6.30 now, and the sun sets at something around 10, but uh, the light never fully disappears during the night. I'm still walking around a little bit, taking some shots, but isn't it wonderful how empty these streets are? <laughs> I'm just walking around the middle of the street. No car anywhere. I already have a destination for tomorrow, but what that is, we'll see then. The next stop on my journey was Wärmland, where I visited some German friends. They were staying at this area for a while and since I was in Sweden too, this was the perfect opportunity to see them again. We spent much time in nature, fishing, boating, grilling. And we also shot an advertisement film for their host's rentable cabins. This was a great opportunity for the three of us to work together as a team and contribute our individual talents to this project. 
Overall, it was a pretty fun week that I spent there, and it really made me fall in love with Scandinavian summers. We have now reached a beautiful stone, and uh, let's check it out. It's a beautiful evening again. The sun is just about to set. Ah. Nice. <laughs> little bit of fishing, little bit of enjoying this beautiful evening. Now they leave me. I will be left alone at this place. There's a forest and a swamp behind me. So if they really leave me alone here, I'm lost. I have to survive. Alone. I have no practice in rowing at all, not at all, but not enough. This one week flew by very quickly and a part of me wished that we could have spent even more time together. But Sweden is a big country and I was pretty much still in the southern part. So it was time to continue my journey. birds here. They're having their nest somewhere down by that river. I'll try to film them. I'm so tired. I just took a little nap in my car. And I've been driving this dirt road for an eternity to get to this place. Look how dirty my car is. But that's okay, because it's a dirt road. And this place here was recommended to me by my friend whom I visited the last couple of days. And what kind of place is this? I'll tell you in a second. Wow, beautiful. Hey. <laughs> I just shot some close-ups of this beautiful butterfly, which is now flying away. And I'm so fascinated by it. Oh! <laughs> so cute. I'm so fascinated by the patterns on the wings. So, so beautiful and so symmetric and so perfect you know everything in the universe just has this tendency towards beauty beauty is perfection beauty is god materializing in the physical world this means bird tower oh look at that Somebody put a chair here to enjoy the view. Let's see how stable it is. It doesn't look that stable anymore, but <laughs> it's still stable enough to sit down. Let's check out the view. There's a big lake over there and a swamp. To the left. That swamp is where I want to go and you also saw the sign bird tower so there's also a tower for watching birds 
So let's go there and see if we can spot any animals. Check out these plants. These are cloud berries. A very iconic berry of the north. What I also love about Nordic nature is how clean everything looks. Not just in the sense of being not polluted, but also in the sense of less is more. You know, everything being reduced to a minimum. Just a minimum amount of species. Just some pine trees, some blueberries, and that's basically it. And through that, through nature being so clean and reduced, also my thoughts and my whole mental health is clearer and just not so polluted. I'm just taking a little rest here and there are many insects flying around me. Unfortunately, I forgot my mosquito head in the car, but that's not such a big problem because there are not so many mosquitoes yet. And look at how big the blueberries already are. Not so long until they can be harvested. Okay, now I'm beginning to understand what a gigantic swamp I'm in here. Look. It's really a very, very big swamp. And the tower is already over there. Can you hear the birds? Take a look inside. Wow. There are even mattresses for sleeping. Lots of books and all sorts of information. Beautiful owl, beautiful eagle. Nice. There are some books about birds. Here's something about a guy who raised eagle babies. That's a view out of the window. It's a nice little cabin for bird watchers. The sun will set in about one hour and I think about sleeping in this cabin tonight. Although I didn't bring a sleeping bag, but that's not so much of a problem because it is so warm in there because the sun was shining on the roof all day long. A much bigger problem is that I didn't bring any water with me and I'm getting really, really, really thirsty and lying in there in a very warm box basically and being thirsty is even worse. I already opened some of the windows in there, so maybe it will cool down a little bit. There's also this little bottle with some water, but <laughs> I'm not so sure about that water, and I'm also not so sure about that bottle at all, but uh, it looks really beautiful, especially with the setting sun in the background. such an intense atmosphere out here. I can capture a little bit in the video for you, but what I cannot capture is the smell in the air, that soft wind coming towards my face, and all the other things that you can only experience in reality. I can't even put it into words. <laughs> it's just wonderful. And I'm just taking some shots of the sun disappearing behind that hill over there.
and look at that clear water in the lake. You know, as a very, very thirsty person, it looks so delicious. It just looks so delicious. I wonder all the time what's with the water in the swamp over there, if it's drinkable, but mm, I don't trust swamp water, but I would trust the water from that lake over there. But to get there, I would have to cross the swamp and everything. It's not uh, realistic. And these are the final moments of the sun for today. taking a little evening walk in this wonderful light and I was already wondering how is it possible that there are only so few mosquitoes at this place? Isn't a swamp basically mosquito paradise? But right now that it's getting darker more and more mosquitoes are flying around. But it's still not that bad. It's not like I'm surrounded by a cloud of mosquitoes. So yeah, maybe Maybe it's just not as bad as everyone is saying, or maybe the worst is yet to come. We will see further north or in two weeks or whatever. We shall see. But for now, I just want to enjoy the privilege of being here. Suddenly I realized how alone I was. The only companion I had out here was nature. But I didn't know that that should change a few hours later. There are so many interesting and also weird noises coming from all different directions, despite the mosquitoes. So I wonder what animals make these noises and what animals are also around in the swamp and in these forests that I haven't seen yet. I mean, of course, there are big animals like mooses, but maybe also bears, at least even uh, in regions that are more southern than here, there are bears, so it is very likely that there are also some bears around in this region. I, I'm not sure, but it's very, very possible. So, <laughs> let's better go back to the cabin. Put this mattress here. Okay, I'm now laying on this mattress and I'm beginning to doubt if I will really be able to sleep here. I mean, I'm extremely tired, but it's also very hot in here and I don't have a pillow and stuff like that. So, hmm, I also have a headache and everything. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't feel so good, but at least the mattress itself feels very good. It's the right amount of softness and yeah we shall see i will just try to fall asleep at least i have a nice view out of that window up there good night
morning. As you can see, I'm already on my way back. I was not really able to sleep tonight. I had a very, very strong headache, probably because of dehydration, but right now the headache is gone completely. It went away at around four o'clock in the morning, just when the sun rose, it was a beautiful sunrise. And it was also at that moment that an elderly bird watcher climbed that tower and we talked a little bit. It was a very nice man and it was really cool. He showed me an eagle that he had zoomed in on and yeah, it was a beautiful animal. But I didn't film him or even ask him if he wanted to be filmed because yeah, Swedish people are very nice and everything and I didn't want him to, I didn't want to put him under pressure to having to say yes or no, it just didn't feel right. And that's also the reason why I only begin to film myself right now on the way back and not on the tower itself. But it was really, it was really nice to talk to him. He told me some interesting things about his life and yeah, we didn't talk that much, but the little conversation we had was very nice. So I don't know if he will see this, but if he will see this, then greetings to you. <laughs> and yeah, now I'm walking back through the swamp. It's around five o'clock. Let's see if I make it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Of course I will make it. Oh, and I asked him if there are bears in this area and he said yes, lots of bears in this area. So my suggestion was right. It doesn't surprise me at all. Beautiful bird over there. I think it's a loon. There's a very special smell in the air. There must be some plant that's growing here that causes that. So fresh and natural. Finally. My body needed it. to another spot nearby and now it's around 11 p.m. <laughs> and it's so beautiful. Look how bright it still is. I don't even want to go to sleep. I mean I really should go to sleep but I enjoy being awake because you have the loneliness of the night, but you still have light. And that is an absolutely magical combination. I love it. I'm so excited to drive further north and see what it's like there. You know, where the sun is actually still shining through the whole night. I can't wait for it. <laughs> 